G'day folks, this is Simon. I'd like to welcome you back to my channel. Today we've got a departure from The Rise of the Phoenix and it's an impromptu motorcycle review. I had the awesome opportunity to take the brand new Ducati Multistrata V4S out for a ride the other day and I thought you guys deserved to know all about it. So let's get right on in there and uh, see what it's like. Here we go, Harley Davidson and Honda and Ducati, all here. Hey guys, so uh, my bike's still in being serviced and having a couple of things done to it. And Nick, the sales guy here at Fraser Motorcycles, is letting me out on the new Ducati Multistrada V4 for a bit of a spin. So. Uh, you're going to get my first reactions out of it, straight, straight up. Oh, it sits lower than the, um, than the Africa Twin. I thought it was going to sit a lot higher to sit on it. So I've only ever driven one Multistrada before, and that was before the V4. And it was big and heavy and scary. So we'll see how we go with this one, eh? So this thing's got a quick shifter in it, so I don't even need to use the clutch apparently. Unless I'm starting off or stopping. Oh, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Oh wow. Yeah, you don't even back off on the uh, on the throttle. You just go for it and change gears. That's kind of neat. So I've been thinking about getting a quick shifter on the uh, on the Africa Twin. But remember not to use the clutch. Oh, it picks up speed pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. What, it's got a merit plug though. That's good. I had one of those installed on my bike. So it's almost like having a DCT and having quick shift. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so I'm just taking a quick ride on it. Oh, well, that's what that thing is. Yep. So that's the orange indicator that there was someone coming up the left hand side of me. So I don't have my other camera because it's actually in the workshop with my bike. Sounds pretty wicked. Ah, sounds like it's got a uh, a funky exhaust on it. It's only the standard exhaust, but it sounds like a um, an exhaust like the Africa Twins got on it, where it uh, what do they call them? Bimodal, a bimodal exhaust on it. Because if you just feather the throttle, you can actually hear it change a little bit. So yeah, the sound of it's really quite interesting. Oh, that's nice. Oh, GMC. It's a very nice display. Oh yeah, electronic suspension by the looks of it. It's the headlights. Hazard lights, start. Fog lights or cornering lights maybe. Very interesting. These are quite trippy though. But honestly, if you're on a motorbike and you don't know there's a car coming up the side of you, you probably shouldn't be riding a motorbike. Let's go. And that was actually like seamless. Really cool. I mean, I probably didn't need to hit fifth gear at 50 kilometers an hour, but um, it's just so smooth. Well, I think I'm pretty much sold on having to get a, uh, 
a quick shifter for the Africa Twin. I mean, I probably wouldn't go to the expense of buying myself a Ducati Multistrada V4, but it is very nice to ride so far. In fact, the, the seating position on it, sitting slightly lower than the Africa Twin, uh, feels quite good. And the seat feels a lot more comfortable than the Africa Twin, to be honest. But those seats are horrible on the Africa Twin, like honestly. Honda, what were you thinking? Plays over really nice and easily too. Quite well behaved for 50 kilometers an hour. Like, I mean, it's not doing that chug, 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 backwards and forwards, you know, where it's rolling on and off the, the throttle switch. It's actually really quite good. Yep, that's quite nice, actually. That's still only fifth gear. <laughs> yeah, it's a six speed, so there we go. I mean, this thing's set in sport mode, so I'm I'm not surprised. Come up beside him and say hello. Howdy. Okay, so the quick shifter is actually really fun. So, okay, um, it's got adaptive cruise control and it's, there's that little orange light again telling me there's a car just beside me. And he's actually kind of in the blind spot too, which is kind of cool. Um, this adaptive cruise control and it's got radar and LiDAR built into it so it can basically work out most things around it, which is kind of nice. I'm kind of thinking, just to give it a shot, on, and set, there we go, I mean to be honest cruise control on a bike is awesome because just being able to let go of the, uh, the throttle once in a while stops you getting that numb tingling feeling in your hand because you've been holding onto the handlebars for so long. So one of the uh, things that I've noticed it's also got, same like the Africa Twin, is when the cruise control is on, which it is right now, if you roll the throttle forwards, it will disengage the cruise control. The other way, of course, is a quick blip on the clutch because there's usually a switch that's very, very sensitive in that. And when you've got a, a bike like this, cruise control is almost a must because I could just imagine you could pick up speeding fines super fast because it just feels like it wants to go it doesn't feel like it wants to kill you unlike the um, Multistrata 1260 that I rode but this feels this feels actually very very um, tame almost not tame I suppose um, very refined for a big, you know, V4 engine, this feels very refined. So I've actually come up to a really beautiful park here in Stockton, which is directly opposite Newcastle CBD. Really, really beautiful here. And it just seems like a nice place to actually stop and talk about this bike that I'm riding right at this moment. And no, this isn't like a uh, a full-on motorcycle review. I actually don't know much about these bikes, to be honest. I just thought it would be fun to record it and tell you about it. So that's actually super easy to get off. That is sitting so much lower than the Africa Twin. So, let's have a look at it. That's rather interesting for the uh, number plate light. <laughs> Usually it's above, facing down. It's got this very slimline exhaust on it too. Much slimmer than what's on the Africa Twin. Brembo brakes on the back, dual caliper, uh, dual pot. Brembo brakes on the front, twin disc, dual pot on each. And uh, 
Pirelli Scorpion Trail 2s on it. So this would be part of your LiDAR and your radar stuff and that sort of thing, but look at how mean that looks with the daytime running lights on. Like, I mean, that looks so mean. And there's those LED indicators down low on the fairing. They're actually really bright too, considering where they are. They're surprisingly good. And they can be seen from the side, which is quite nice. So this bike is also a push button start bike. I got the key fob in my pocket. Oh, it's coming up. Nice. Key fob's in my pocket and it's push button start. That's so cool. It's like something out of Alien vs Predator. You hear the fans cut in though, they're really, really loud. Let's shut it off. There we go. So, it's trying to tell me to turn the handlebars and lock the ignition and stuff. What it also has on it that uh, was pointed out is you pop this open and this is an iPhone um, charging cradle. I mean, I don't know what size iPhones people have got. I don't have an iPhone, but um, yeah, certainly couldn't fit my behemoth of a phone in there. That's a OnePlus 7T Pro. So all in all, to be honest, I'm actually quite impressed by the way this thing is. I've never ridden a bike with a quick shifter before and it really is quite good. So you know that bit where you're out doing an impromptu review for your YouTube channel and it's impromptu because my YouTube channel is not big enough that people like Ducati would give me bikes to uh, do test rides on uh, normally and do um, you know reviews on maybe one day in the future. However doing that impromptu review when suddenly your uh, GoPro goes beep beep and complains because it's out of memory. So anyway, I suppose the important question really is about the Multistrada is would I buy one? Look, yes, I would, if I had the sort of money that they uh, sell for. It's a lot of money for a bike, especially considering you can have it parked up outside a newsagent while you're running in to get a you know, SD card, micro SD card, and somebody could run over it with their car. Like the Africa Twin was um, a $21,000 bike, plus obviously all the accessories on it. If you start off with this, at, let's say 35, and you want to go and add engine bars onto it, proper decent bark busters, mind you though, they seem okay, but they're, um, they're just plastic and they bend like the Africa Twins uh, standard ones do. So you go and you add bark busters onto it, you go you add engine guards onto it, and it very quickly, if it starts off at 35, you'll be at 42 or 43 before you know it. Same happened with the Africa Twin, you know, started off at 21 and you're up around 26 really, really quickly, 26, 27,000. It's amazing just how quickly that happens. But that's it. If money were no object, would I buy one? Hell yeah. Why not? Fun. I could have one of these and I could have something else completely different. No worries. But would it be suitable for what I want to do? Moto, moto traveling, moto touring around the planet? Possibly, yes. 
But who can service it? Probably only Ducati service centres. Who can um, supply parts for it? Obviously only Ducati can. And therein lies part of the problem with it. So you go and you buy this really funky, nice bike and you, um, you spend a lot of money preparing it to go and travel the world on it. And then let's say you get to uh, Northern Lao. And when you're there, something happens, like a rock gets stuck in the chain and it breaks a couple of teeth off your front sprocket. And I just use the front sprocket as an example, but something breaks a couple of teeth off your front sprocket. Where do you get another one? When you're in Northern Lao, you get one from Italy. Because the nearest Ducati dealer to there probably is in Italy or in Australia. I'm not sure that I ever saw one in Thailand. Could be changed now, but you know, um, they're not everywhere on every street corner. That said though, you might be able to do two or 300,000 kilometers on it and never ever have a problem. But if you do have that problem, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Oh, that's quite cool. Never ridden around there, so it's kind of like I didn't know where I was going to come out. So yeah, um, realistically guys, this is an absolutely kick-ass lovely bike to ride. I must say I would quite happily ride this um, quite a bit. You could probably tour around Australia on it without a problem. You could definitely tour around Europe without a problem because you're going to find Ducati dealers in most capital cities or even most large regional large cities or you'll find somebody who can get the parts for you from Ducati. But that said though, uh, absolutely lovely bike, love it to bits, beautiful to ride, definitely has plenty of grunt, plenty of go, but I wouldn't want one for touring the world. Because as nice as it is and as comfortable as it is, it's got seat warmers and it's got hand, uh, handlebar warmers and stuff like that. Seat warmers, like wow. I mean, as much as this is such a nice bike and it's very comfortable to ride on, it's a very comfortable riding position seated wise. Um, standing is, uh, is not too bad either. I mean, there's not so much to grip onto with the tank because it's very, very slippery and um, I mean, you definitely want to have some tank grips on there, wouldn't you? Let's go. Whoa, that started to lose traction then. <laughs>